Slide 1. Hi, my name is Justin Valenti. I'm 25 years old and I live in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Before I get started, I want to thank Laura Castillo and the families who worked so hard to plan this conference and for the opportunity to share my experiences of living with Cree Du Chat. Pause this is the fifth 5P Society Conference I've attended, Miami, 2000, Philadelphia, 2004, Norfolk, 2008, Pittsburgh, 2018, and now Charlotte, 2022. I have Cree Du Chat Syndrome and Autism. Both have impacted and shaped my life. I'm happy to have the chance to share some of my experiences of living with Cree Du Chat. Pause. Slide 2. I'll give you a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about this afternoon. First, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Then, I'll talk about what it's like to live with a disability using three different topics, inclusion, self-awareness, and empowerment. The first topic will be the path I took to be included in society and some pros and cons from my perspective. Next, I'll talk about how my family and I approached having a disability like Cree Du Chat. After that I'll share how I became involved in choosing my path. Finally, I'll wrap up by talking about where I'm headed. Slide 3. Although I had some of the features when I was born, I wasn't diagnosed with Cree Du Chat right away. Some of the characteristics I had include. A round face with wide set eyes. Folds on the inner corner of my eyes. Initially I was slow to grow and I was on the later of normal and meeting early milestones. I had chronic reflux, I wore a bib for the first three years of my life. I have low muscle tone, which is part of why I crawled and walked a little later than other kids. Low muscle tone caused me to have feeding difficulties when I was a baby. And I have poor posture because my core muscles are weak. I had a lot of ear and sinus infections, doctors took my adenoids and tonsils out and put two sets of tubes in my ears to minimize ear and sinus infections. My speech and language were delayed, I began working with a speech therapist when I was 15 months old. I have always had issues with constipation. A couple years ago, I started taking lenses and it has really helped with this. Slide 4. When I was a baby, my parents noticed that the neighbor's cat often sat outside my bedroom window and meowed when I cried, but they didn't think anything about it until they were talking with the doctor right after he diagnosed me with Cree Du Chat. The doctor asked them what my cry sounded like, and then it clicked. The cat sat under my window because it thought I was another cat. I was diagnosed with Cree Du Chat syndrome when I was two one half, and then was diagnosed with autism when I was three years old. My parents said that getting these diagnoses was a little overwhelming, but was also helpful, it allowed them and professionals to learn more about what supports and services might help me. And having the diagnosis has enabled them to get the services I've needed, and continue to need. Slide 5. I began going to speech, occupational and physical therapy when I was 15 months old. I attended therapy three mornings per week. And when we were playing at home, my parents incorporated activities to help develop the skills therapists were working on. During my preschool years, we lived in Melbourne, Florida, home of the Space Coast Early Intervention Center. My parents, and I, were introduced to the idea of inclusion, which opened the door for me to play and learn with kids with and without disabilities. Space Coast Early Intervention Center planted the seed for inclusion and advocacy, and this helped shape my parents' approach and who I am today, my experiences, my opportunities, and my path. I moved to Maryland right before I started kindergarten. I was included in general education classes in school, with support from a paraeducator from kindergarten through high school. Inclusion isn't one size fits all, it looks different for everyone. I was included for most classes and activities. The best thing about being included was that I made a lot of new friends every year and that I got to participate in school-wide assemblies, field trips, and other events with my peers. One of the things I did not like about inclusion was that the paraeducators often sat right beside me in my classes. But none of the other kids had adults sitting by them. Inclusion allowed me to have the same opportunities as people who don't have a disability. One of the most challenging parts of inclusion was when my classmates did things that I wasn't ready to do. I was really frustrated when I turned 16 and everyone at school was learning how to drive. It seemed like people were tweeting or posting selfies with their new driver's license every day. I still don't know how to drive. But, after travel training and a lot of practice, I can get where I want to go independently using taxis, buses, the subway and Uber. The first picture is of me singing along to a CD with a friend. The next picture of me with my friends is from my elementary school's graduation in 2006. The last picture is of me performing with other students at Space Coast Early Intervention Center. Slide 6. 
I learned to ride my bike in 2018 with the help of a program called I Can Bike. I don't ride my bike to get met where I need to go, but I like going on bike rides with my family. The longest ride I've done is 13 miles on the Great Allegheny Passage Rail Trail in Maryland. I still want to learn how to drive, but I'm not ready to do that. Here are a couple of pictures of me with my friends. Slide 7. When we were deciding which activities I should participate in, my parents and I looked for things that matched my interests and strengths. In elementary and middle school, I participated in Boy Scouts, church youth group, and recreational sports like basketball and swimming. My participation and progress might have looked different sometimes because of my disabilities, but I liked these activities. The activities I participated in high school were really well matched for me. I was in Best Buddies and participated in Cougar TV, Student to Run, weekly news broadcast, during first year of high school. In 10th grade, I joined the marching band because I loved music and I had been taking drum lessons since I was in 6th grade. The marching band director was very supportive of me and it was a great experience that allowed me to connect with my peers around a common interest and socially. The people in the marching band were nice and they accepted me. In 11th grade, I began taking sign language class, joined the ASL club and I was also in the anti-bullying club. In 12th grade, I had an internship as a student aide in the counseling office. I delivered hall passes to classrooms and helped organize office materials. I liked being a student aide because I was able to do this independently. My friends from elementary school and I went to Dave and Buster's for my birthday. Bowling with friends from best buddies, high school club. Friends from marching band, I enjoyed being part of the marching band because I made a lot of new friends. Slide 8. I've stayed friends with a couple friends from elementary school and I've made other friends through the different activities I've participated in. I like spending time with friends. My friends and I go to movies, sporting events, restaurants and concerts. I really miss doing things in person with my friends during the pandemic, but I stayed in touch with them using Zoom. I've also made several friends at Visibility, which is an art studio for artists with disabilities. Art is something that's become a passion of mine. I've learned through trial and error that my favorite type of art to create is fluid paintings. I even taught an online fluid painting class for VisArts once. I mentioned earlier that I was also in the marching band when I was in high school, I still play the drums. I am the drummer in a band for people who have disabilities through a group in Maryland called Up County Community Resources, our band is called Neurodiversity, you can check out some of our videos on YouTube. Pause I even helped make a music video, it's on YouTube too and is called Neurodiversity Fun Never Ends. Slide 9. Growing up, I've always enjoyed being involved in my community and I want to continue to be engaged as an adult. I'm currently involved in a variety of ways. In addition to the activities I've already mentioned, I work part-time at the National Institutes of Health, I'm involved in state and local disability advocacy and I'm active in the young adult group at my church. I made it through the transition from high school to work, but it wasn't easy. It was a bumpy road. I transitioned from high school when I was 18 and I struggled for a while, socially and trying to figure out which path was right for me, work, college, or a combination. After graduation, most of my friends moved away to college and I became very lonely. In addition, there were very few activities for young adults with disabilities. After some searching, my mom found Visibility Art Lab. Visibility has become a very important part of my life. Not only has it fostered my passion for art, but I've made friends who share my love of creating art. I worked part-time at a dog kennel for a while but it wasn't a good fit because my work schedule frequently changed at the last minute which made me anxious. I also didn't like taking the dogs outside when there were thunderstorms. I took a couple classes at the community college, but I had a hard time with the soft skills needed to navigate the classes independently. College didn't seem to be a good fit for me either. After looking for a job training program, we learned about Project Search, which is a job training program for people with disabilities. It included a 10-month internship and classroom instruction for soft skills needed for the workplace. When I finished the internship, I was offered a job as an office clerk at the National Institutes of Health. I just celebrated my two-year work anniversary a couple years ago and I'm very proud of this. In addition, I'm involved in several disability community organizations including People of the Go of Maryland, where I help train both law enforcement officers and other self-advocates. I was in the 2019 cohort of Maryland's Partners in Policymaking. I'm also a board member on the board of directors for the Art Maryland. And I'm part of Tink Tank Animate, which assists people with disabilities to tell stories through print and visual media. 
With the help of this organization, I've published three books, which you can buy on Amazon and Lulu. Slide 10. As long as I remember, I've known that I have cre du chat and autism. I learned about this from my parents, who've always been very open with me and others about my diagnoses. I think that being self-aware has been helpful for me. I remember my parents and I reading a book about what it means to have disabilities and we talked about people having different things that they are good at. We also talked about how we all have some things that are hard for us and we aren't very good at. I used to ask why my sister was so good at riding a bike and why I hadn't learned how to do it yet. My parents explained that even though I hadn't learned how to ride a bike yet, I was a really good reader. And they reminded me that my sister was still working on learning to read. This is something that my parents continued to remind me when other people were doing things that I couldn't yet do. And as I've gotten older, my parents remind me that even though there are still some things that my peers do that I don't do, like drive a car, that I know how to use public transportation to get to where I want and need to go. And actually, I'm better at using the bus and metro than my parents and sister. I'm glad that my parents didn't keep my disability from me because I wouldn't have been able to share my experiences with other people and help them better understand what's difficult for me and what I need help with. Slide 11. Growing up, I learned that knowing my strengths, weaknesses, and interests was helpful to me and others. Over the years, I've become more aware of my strengths, interests, and weaknesses. Knowing what I'm good at and what's difficult for me has been helpful because I can share it with people who are supporting me as I work to become more independent. Being aware of my strengths and weaknesses has also been helpful for figuring out what classes activities that I want to participate in and what type of job might be good for me. Knowing what I'm good at and what I like doing also helps me find things that I have in common with other people. For instance, I know that a couple of my friends like music so I use that to start conversations with them. A couple of examples of my strengths are that I'm good at reading, I have a good memory and I'm good at public speaking. A couple of examples of my weaknesses are that I am easily distracted and I spend more time than I should on social media. Slide 12. Empowerment isn't something that just happens, experiences, people, and the messages we hear influence how empowered we feel. My parents and others who have supported me over the years have empowered me to be actively engaged in decisions related to my life and to become a self-advocate. I really enjoy helping others to develop self-advocacy skills and sharing my experiences with others. My involvement with the Art Maryland and people on the go in Maryland allow me to help others become empowered in their lives and in the community. Slide 13. I feel fortunate that I am verbal. My parents told me that I used to get really frustrated when I wanted something but couldn't tell people. I began working with a speech therapist, who taught me sign language and spoken language. I learned signs for the important words like bathroom, cookie, and dog, so I could better communicate what I wanted and needed. And after I started talking, I didn't need to use the signs anymore. So, my parents had me start with sign language as a toddler to allow me to communicate even before I could say words. It was a great day when I learned to sign more and cookies and milk and my parents understood and gave me what I wanted. That was awesome, for all of us. I only used sign language for a couple of years and then I started talking. Now there are some times when my parents can't get me to stop talking. Although I didn't use a computer for communication, it's something that I've used since I was 18 months old. I learned to type, not well, but effectively, and I've been able to compensate for low muscle tone and poor fine motor skills when I was younger by typing out my thoughts. Today my iPhone is my go-to device for communication, entertainment, and support for independent living including reminders to take my medicine to an app to guide me in brushing my teeth to the bus and subway apps. I know there are apps to assist with communication. Like most kids, your daughter or son probably loves technology, so don't be afraid to try them. Technology is easy to pick up when you're young. Being able to communicate is powerful, I still struggle sometimes and sometimes it takes me extra time to fully form what I want to say and to get it out. But, whether I point, sign, type or use words to communicate, getting my point across and understood is extremely satisfying, change slide. Slide 14. The other important part of self-advocacy is being able to choose. My parents stumbled into this choice and involvement concept almost accidentally. As a toddler, I was very interested in computers and technology, I loved using the computer and watching VHS videos, and listening to CDs, and sync. I was fairly active then and often wore out my parents before I was done learning and exploring. I learned how to change a game on the computer, they were on CDs then, and how to change the tape in the VCR. 
These skills didn't come without some pain. My parents say I wore out three VCRs and countless VHS tapes of kids shows and educational videos before I mastered it. But the key was once I did, I could independently choose what I was doing. As I got older my parents continued this thinking, and increased the variety and amount of options available to me when they presented me with choices. They were willing to let me make mistakes, which sometimes included breaking things and making messes, from time to time by extending the boundaries outside of my comfort zone as I got older. My favorite example was when I went to a field of screams haunted farm with marching band one fall. My parents knew I wouldn't like it, which I didn't because I don't like people scaring me or surprises, but they let me go and discover that on my own. Over the years, I learned that I needed to speak up when hanging out with friends, for example, saying whether I want to go to the movies or bowling etc. At home, my parents involve me in simple day-to-day -day decisions such as meals, amounts, selections, restaurant choices, etc., movie choices, and social activities, with family and friends, and family vacations. I've also been encouraged to help plan my future, which included participating in my IEP meetings and selecting my classes in school. As someone with Cree do chat, having the opportunity to make choices and share my opinion makes me feel valued. I encourage you to look for opportunities for your children to make choices be when it's feasible. We're usually happy when we think we're in control smiley changed slide. Slide 15. Something else that's been really helpful for me is having a companion animal. When I was in kindergarten, I got a companion dog that I named Buddy, who helped me make new friends at the playground and in the community. Buddy also helped to calm me when I was upset or anxious. Buddy passed away in 2013, when I was in 11th grade. I missed Buddy a lot, but in 2015 I convinced my parents to get a new dog. This was a great self-advocacy accomplishment. I got Tom, a pug. And he was my best friend for about 7 years. He helped me relax when I was anxious. And he was good company when I was lonely. Unfortunately Tom passed away last October. I've missed Tom so and have been really lonely without him. My parents got me a puppy in April. Coda really playful and he's quickly becoming a great companion. Slide 16. I think about my future often. One of my near-term goals is to improve skills needed for independent living. I'm working on daily living skills like cleaning up after myself, putting things where they belong, so I can find things when I need them, cutting food, measuring ingredients and personal hygiene, like paying more attention when I'm brushing my teeth. I want to live in an apartment with support in the future. My parents and I are learning about the options and working to figure out what will be a good fit for me. We still need to do a lot of planning before I move out though. Someday, I'd like to get my driver's license, even if it's just so I can say that I can drive. I actually don't think I would like driving where I live, the Washington DC metro area has a lot of traffic and driving there seems pretty stressful. I'm glad that we have a really good public transit system and that I know how to use it. I don't need to drive to get where I need to go right now, but if I move to some place where the public transportation isn't very good it would be nice to have a driver's license. I'm not in a relationship, but I do have a couple of good friends who are girls. This fall, I'm planning to start a certificate program at the community college that will help me with my job. My supervisor is very supportive of me and encouraged me to try taking classes again. I'm going to take one class at a time. Some of the classes are virtual, so I won't need to worry about bad weather. Slide 17. As I finish up, I'll share a few takeaways, which summarize what I, along with my parents and sister Jessica, have taken on my journey with Cree Du Chat. First, I really enjoyed, and I think, benefited from being included in a variety of activities, independently where possible and with support when needed. This wasn't always easy and there were always obstacles to overcome, some of those were my challenges, and other difficulties came from the world around us not always being ready to include each and every one of us. Second, considering strengths, interests, challenges and dislikes can be really helpful when selecting activities. For instance, after recognizing that I get really stressed about being outside in severe weather, I keep this in mind and plan accordingly for activities, employment, etc. Finally, I think it was helpful for me to participate in age-appropriate activities as I moved from child to teenager to young adult. I really enjoy being with my peers, especially those who have interests similar to mine and doing things that typical young adults do. Slide 18. Communication and connections with others have been important, in my family I'm the extrovert. I love being around people and always have. I consider that one of my strengths and I've found activities, clubs and organizations that embrace this. 
Believe it or not, I actually enjoy public speaking, smile. Pause, with communication, find what works and use that to engage. For me it started with sign language. That led to talking and eventually to public speaking. Written communication is another piece. Technology can reduce some of the physical barriers that make handwriting difficult. Since elementary school, I've used a laptop or my phone for written communications. This made a huge difference because my fine motor skills are not great. Something else that's helped me feel empowered is being able to make choices. Making choices gives me a feeling of being in control of some things. Over the years, my parents have allowed me to make choices along the way, starting with which shirt I wanted to wear and eventually what I wanted to eat for lunch and what movie I wanted to watch. Like most people, disabled or not, I'm happier when I have some control over what happens to me. Finally, we all need the support and encouragement of others. Things might be more difficult for those of us with pre do chat and progress might be slow. Continue to be patient and celebrate all of our progress, no matter how small it might seem. We'll continue to surprise you with our determination and accomplishments. My parents learned early on that connecting with and having the support of parents in similar situations would be helpful. Like you, they wanted to hear from parents of older children to get an idea of what the journey would be like. And even though we're all unique, I hope that something I shared today will be helpful as you navigate your journey. I intentionally left time for you to ask questions. I'm happy to answer any questions you have for me. As you heard, I'm comfortable talking about myself and sharing my perspective. Does anybody have a question? After the last question, thank you. Smile. Slide 1. Hi, my name is Justin Valenti.